Credit to Ismail Valero for putting this uh, ranking together. These are all the mathematical symbols and I'm gonna rank them based on usefulness, based on beauty, ease of use, like how easy it is to write, and just general awesomeness. So, so starting with alpha. Alpha is typically used for angles. You can use alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. You can write it with a single stroke, so it's pretty good. There's also a constant that uses alpha. I can't remember the name of it. I'm gonna put it in A. I think it's underrated. I think it's slightly underrated. I don't think it's too bad. Beta, beta, again, you can write it in one stroke. So that's a really good positive for ease of write, ease of use it ease of use, you just literally do that. In terms of its beauty, I would say it's not very beautiful. It looks kind of a bit funky. So I'm gonna put it a bit lower than than than, than alpha. Uh, I'm gonna put beta in B tier, okay? Gamma, now I think this is a very beautiful symbol. I love writing the, the symbol gamma. It can be written in one stroke and also euler mascheroni constant uses gamma. So it's automatically got to be A++ beautiful. There's a lot of higher tiers as well, which uh, I think we're going to need because a lot of these symbols are quite good. Delta, uh, the Delta, Kronika Delta, uh, you can write it in a single sim, in a single line. Yeah, it's a very solid mathematical symbol. Everybody knows that it's kind of, it looks a bit like a snake. Everyone knows that it's kind of mathsy. So I'll put, I'll put it in, I'll put it in pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Um, like this video, by the way, if you think that I'm pretty cool. Epsilon is, I don't like it. And I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, it's not as easy to write, in my opinion, especially because it's like, I mean, yes, it is only one stroke, but it's like, it's not like a loop. You don't really want a loop in the middle. You want an E, basically. I don't. I just don't like writing it. Xi, actually. No, I'm thinking of Xi. Xi is horrible to write. This one, it's not horrible to write, but it's not very pretty, I would say. And I don't really know where it's used. So I'm gonna put it in C. Yeah, I'm putting C tier. Z zeta, zeta, used in the Raymond zeta function, obviously. And it is quite beautiful, but not, it is, it's easy-ish to write once you get the hang of it. Yeah, I would say this one, this symbol, this symbol's probably underrated. I would say it's probably underrated. It's probably A tier. Eta, now this is easily confused with an N or some kind of misspelling, or it, it just looks like a weird letter. It doesn't, it doesn't look nice. It just looks weird. It looks lopsided. Sided. So it, it, it's automatically probably mediocre and I don't really know what it's used for. So I think I put in trash, honestly. Um, and if, if you find, if you get offended by any of this, I don't care. Like literally just go and throw yourself off of, uh, actually don't, I can't say that on YouTube. Uh, I'll get the video demonetized. Uh, throw yourself off of the floor and onto your bed and go to sleep and take a nap. That's what I meant to say. Theta. Theta kind of looks to me like a pill and I don't like pills. I don't like doctors. I don't trust doctors. Doctors are controlled by lizard people. So we're going to put that in uh, trash. Next, we've got iota. Okay. Iota is uh, is easy to write, very easy to write. It's probably the easiest to write symbol. It looks, again, like a, it doesn't look very good. It looks like a mistaken letter. So I put it in mediocre, okay? It gets points for being easy to write, but it, it doesn't, it, it's gotten really no other qualities other than that. And also people, people talk about iota as like a little thing, like iota. So everybody kind of knows it, which gives it a point, but still it's not very great. Kappa, not very easy to write. You have to put three lines, maybe two. Uh, it does look beautiful in my, my opinion. So I'm gonna give it a point D. I'm gonna put in D tier. Lambda, now this one is used for length, wavelength. It's used, so it's used in physics. It's used for when you've got lambda, mu, and nu. These three symbols are used together in uh, like physical, like mechanics equations, basically. So I'll say, I, I like these three letters. I like these, you know, generally I would put them in A. Lambda, mu, and nu. Mu's my favorite. Nu's not so good because new kind of, it, 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 it looks like a V. And again, it looks like a broken V. It looks like you've made a mistake. So I don't like how it looks. Next, we've got Xi. You use this in like uh, physics when you're dealing with certain permutivities, I think. Permi oh no, I'm thinking epsilon. It, again, it's so bad. It's such a bad, terrible symbol that it can very easily be confused with epsilon. And it's also terrible to write. So this is, if there was a tier below trash, Xi would be in that tier. And it's not even easy to say Xi. Psi. Like, pi? Eh, I think it's overrated. I honestly think pi is over, overrated because you, you need three strokes to write it, yeah? That, that automatically makes it terrible. But then, also, I don't think it's that pretty. 
I think it's like, it's all right, but a lot of people just do three lines, which just looks really boring and bland, and they have to kind of stylize it a little bit and bend the lines just to make it look pretty. I don't think that's, it's very pretty naturally. Omicron, terrible letter. Never use Omicron, okay? It, it's gonna be mistaked for an O, which can be mistaked for a zero, and uh, who uses Omicron? Next, we've got Rho, which is used for resistivity. Um, it's an easy thing to write. It's kind of okay on the eyes. Um, it looks a bit like a, a rotated sigma. I'm gonna, put it in, I'm gonna put it in B tier. It's normal, same with sigma. Sigma, they're, they're okay, they're okay. Tau. Uh, Terence Tau automatically gets in legendary tier. Upsilon, terrible, terrible. It looks like a V. It just looks like a V. It's terrible. You've got Phi, which I think is a very nice symbol. I'm going to put it up with Lambda. Maybe even, actually, I'll put it with Mu, because Phi, one line, one stroke, it's unique, it's identifiable, it's beautiful. Chi, I think that's how you pronounce it. This is used in chi-square tests, which is in statistics, which I kind of have PTSD about, so I'm gonna have to put it in mediocre. If I if I if it wasn't used for statistics, I'll just I would put it maybe at B tier or C tier. But it's it's a nice looking symbol. It just it was used in the chi-square tests, which was basically where you you take the entire table and you square the whole thing and then you divide it by n and then you times it by something else I, I just hated it next we've got psi which is the devil's pitchfork and we don't support the devil on this channel so that's in f tier and then we've got omega which kind of looks like I, I don't know if i should say that it, it looks like it looks like something inappropriate yeah and it can also be confused with a, a w so i'm gonna put that in f tier i don't know why omega is so used i mean capital omega looks good and capital omega is fine but lowercase omega mm -mm -mm -mm. looks inappropriate bro what are you trying to draw on my page. What are you doing there? Speed of light is C. I don't like that. I think it should be S or it should be S subscript L, not C. Uh, golden ratio uses phi. I think that's a really good pairing. Oil is constant. Again, we've done we've done gamma. Um, <laughs> I put it. I put it in. I put it in here. Okay, it's a very nice symbol, uh, and it's a very nice constant. Planck's constant H makes no sense. Why H? Why not P? Or why not PL? You know, why H? Reduced Planck's constant. Same thing. I mean, the, the slash makes makes the reduced make sense. Okay, fine. Planck's constant should just be P. Vacuum magnetic permeability and also vacuum electric permeability. Now, I remember this in physics. You basically have these equations which use the vacuum and it's when electrons are permeating through or charges are permeating through. Very useful constant, not very... I mean, it's kind of pretty. Um, it makes sense to put a zero there because that's like a vacuum, right? So I, I put it in. It's a solid. It's pretty cool. Same with this one. Actually, this one uses a slightly less cool symbol, so we'll put it in underrated. Uh, gravitational constant. Graham's number is big G. What are you doing gravitational constant? Nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. Graham's number is not useful for anything. So gravitational constant being big G makes a lot of sense. I'll put it in A++. You can't get better than that. You know, it, if you if you took a five-year-old and told him to guess what symbol to use for gravitational constant, he would know the answer. So that's, that's all you need. Next, we've got Coulomb's constant, which is K subscript E. I think I might have seen it used a different letter before, but I'm going to put this one in, well, it, it doesn't make sense to me why it would be K subscript E. So I will put this in mediocre or maybe trash. Yeah, let's put it in, let's put it in trash. Elementary charge makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Charge is Q. Well, I don't know why charge is Q. So maybe it doesn't make that much sense. Elementary is E. That's fine. Inverse fine structure constant. That's one of the ones that I don't know, actually. Electron mass makes perfect sense. What, how can, yeah, A plus plus. How, how can it be any better? It's not magnificent. Same with mass of a proton, MP, obviously. Uh, Avogadro's constant. This is number Avogadro, so they should really call it Avogadro's number. Avogadro's Avogadro Avogadro's number. Avogadro Nicocado Avogadro made a number, and it's a very small number. So we'll put it in. We'll put it in B. I think it's A actually. I think it's underrated. Okay, so next we've got molar gas constant and Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant makes sense. We'll put it in with all the other ones that make sense. But molar gas constant. Sorry, that's just terrible. Arrow vector makes perfect sense. I know that some Americans use an arrow with one like tick on the top rather than both on the top. Some uh, in England, a lot of times you just underline it, which I actually think is not very good because a vector is an arrow. Just use the arrow on top. So I'm going to say this is magnificent. That is proper STS stuff. Bold face vector, terrible, terrible. Use the arrow. 
okay? Bold face, you can't even write it down. So what's the use in that, you know? And yeah, it's also kind of difficult to see sometimes. So L variant, what else letter would you use? Use a curly L. Um, and a curly L is nice, so I'll put it beautiful. Beta variant, I think this is kind of beautiful, easy to write. Uh, I don't really know what it's used for, so I guess I'll put it in unknown, but I would put it in A tier. Epsilon variant, Epsilon's a terrible symbol. That one gets confused with the other one. How how do you know when to use the Epsilon like that and the Epsilon with the two things? How do you know when to use that? Theta variant, this is again, one that can get confused with Theta, uh, put it in trash. Uh, Kappa, who writes Kappa like that? Uh, I mean, I guess it gets a little bit better points because it's at least unique and it's nice to write, but still, call it something else. Next, we've got pi variant. This is used in the Limniscuit, I believe. It doesn't look a lot like pi, but I think it looks okay. Um, I'm going to put it in C. All right, now we've got rho variant, sigma variant. Sigma variant is not very good because it can be confused with zeta or epsilon even, or, you know, it, it, it can be even confused with C when you write it down. So uh, I'm going to put it in trash. Rho variant, however, that is a quite a unique symbol. And it's also quite beautiful and easy to write. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. Phi variant. This I actually don't like, okay? Because whenever you write this down with the line and then the circle, it's like, it never looks as good as it looks here. It never looks good. It just looks like, I don't know, just a bit trash. So I'm gonna put it in trash. Time variable. Uh, what else letter would you use? Pretty cool, yeah. Imaginary unit. Don't use J, okay? I know if you're an engineer, you like to say pi is three and I is J. Like, bro, come on, what are you doing? Equals, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I was one time thinking of like, I don't know, just like doodling around like, oh, what would I design the equal sign like? I would have probably put like two arrows or something, but that would have just been a little bit harder to write because like this one's this one and it goes, because it goes both ways. But I don't think that that's really important. Not equals makes perfect sense. It's just beautiful. Same with equals, to be honest. Uh, plus makes sense. I'm not against it. Minus, yeah, it can be confusing a little bit with negative or, well, I mean, they are the same thing, but with the dash symbol, right? It just looks like a dash. So I put it in, I put it in normal. Um, times, I'll put it in with plus. And I mean, actually that can be confused with X. So I'll put it in with minus as well. And the divide symbol is I think beautiful because the reason the divide symbol looks like that is because it's actually a fraction. Because when you have a fraction one over two, you're really saying one divided by two and that's just a fraction. So that symbol is perfect. Don't use the slash symbol, okay? The slash symbol, if you're gonna use the slash symbol, you might as well just put one over the other and make it a fraction. Um, less than and greater than, these make perfect sense because you've got basically the smaller thing on the left hand side, the bigger thing on the right hand side, of course you're gonna have wider on the bigger side, narrow on the small side, and that makes the symbol. So that is, I mean, it can get confusing. A lot of people get them the wrong way around. So I'm gonna put them in normal, but actually not overrated. I'll put them in overrated because there is that downside to them. Uh, these make perfect sense. So I'll put them in pretty cool because obviously you're gonna just blend the two signs, the equals and the less than and the equals and the greater than. Square root, it's a big R, uh, which makes sense. And I think it's quite a nice looking symbol as well. So I'm going to put this in beautiful. Next you've got carrot, which I don't know what carrot is. Next you've got if and if and only if. These make perfect sense to me. I love these symbols and they're beautiful to write. They just, I just love them. Uh, belongs to, yeah, that is a not a great one actually because it can be confused with the epsilons. There exists is perfect though. It's a backwards E. It's unique. Can't be confused. It's easy to write. It's just a backwards E. Therefore, in university, they don't ever use this symbol and they actually penalize you if you use it. But I think it's a very good symbol. I think it's a nice conclusion statement. You know, you write therefore, you just put three dots in and it's unique as well. For all, again, just like the backwards E, it's a very nice symbol, very nice symbol because it's big A is obviously all and you just put it upside down to make it unique. So identity, I don't like this symbol because it, it's not very easy to see. Also, what, when do you use the identity and when do you use the equal sign? Nobody really knows. So, um, I mean, it makes sense. Like, yeah, if it's true for all values, then you'd put an extra line. But other than that, I'd say it's a bit overrated. Next, you've got the not symbol, which I'm not a huge fan of. <laughs> get it? Not a huge fan of. I just don't get why this is not. Um, maybe there's an explanation. Maybe one of you guys knows why not looks like that. Uh, but I mean, it's unique and it makes sense and it's easy to write. So I, I'd just say it's normal. I've not really got very, very strong opinions about it. Factorial, I kind of do. Um, it looks, I mean, it kind of looks like what it is. You'd take the, the number and then multiply by all the previous numbers. Kind of 
the factorial symbol kind of does make sense. But obviously, you, sometimes people like to put exclamation marks in their sentences, and that can get confusing with factorial. So for example, if they shout a number, I'm gonna put it in overrated. It's not horrible, it's just a bit overrated. Length is meter, perfect, that's beautiful. What else would you use? Time is in seconds, that's fine. Uh, kilograms, mass, yeah, that's fine. Amperes, that's fine. Uh, moles, that's fine. Kelvin, that's fine. Candela, that's fine. Fine. Radians, that's fine. Uh, don't like that one because it should be ST, so I'll put it in, uh, put it in overrated. Uh, Hertz, that's fine. Newtons, yeah, okay, okay, that's fine. Um, Pascals, that's fine. All of these kind of make sense, which most of the time when we're talk, talking about these physics letters, phys physicists seem to use proper letters for these. You know, they just take the first letter, put it as what they call it, farads. Uh, and then you've got ohms, which is omega, Weber, I think it should be W-E, but I put it pretty cool still. Uh, lumens is L-M. Yeah, I'll put it with Weber. Uh, and then this one, this one's a bit worse. Actually, I'll put it in with the, these. Those are just not super intuitive. X, Y, Z. X can be confused with the time symbol, but it's like the most common math symbol ever. I'm going to put it in overrated because if you can confuse it with another symbol, that's a huge downside. And it's not very easy to write either. You kind of have to use two lines and you can get the line sort of like that and it makes it look really funny or you can make it like that which makes it look funny as well so it's not easy to write i'd say it's massively overrated why however is quite beautiful and it is also easy to write and it's unique so i'm going to put it in beautiful and z it's okay to write i put it in pretty cool function f of something makes perfect sense to me it's the same as in computer science so i'm going to put it in beautiful and uh differential being d yeah um i mean it can be confused with the letter d used for a variable so i'm going to put it in pretty cool but some time but 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 yeah you've got partial derivative which is better because that's not going to be confused with a letter that's kind of its own thing you wouldn't really use the the del symbol for anything else i prefer newton's notation personally just because this to me can be confused with image like i image like i dash for i image or a dash for the image of a when you do transformations um so this is going to be up there with beautiful this is going to be a little bit lower at normal this integral sign i like it a lot i think that everybody every Every mathematician likes it like it's a bit magnificent to be honest closed integral makes perfect sense nabla it's all right it's all right i mean yeah it's, it's a good symbol it's easy to write it's beautiful capital sigma for sum yeah that's a very nice symbol capital pi for product is obvious it makes perfect sense direct sum and tensor product uh these are just sum and product but with circles around them and i think that that makes them instantly very intuitive and very beautiful a transpose can be confused with a to the power capital T because it's not actually a to the power capital T you see it's a to the power of the top symbol so it's not in beautiful but it is pretty cool still infinity very recognizable I think that's legendary you can't be infinity Aleph uh, for Aleph null yeah it's pretty good it, it, it is it, it it looks ominous and it looks like how infinity should look Euler's number for e mm, that can be confused for other things though but it does make sense to use e for Euler's number I put it in a plus I would have personally put capital E, but I don't know. Maybe that could be confused for energy or something. Anyway, those are all my symbols ranked. If you disagree with the symbols, then let me know in the comment section and I will be sure to tell you why you're wrong. Uh, click and watch this video if you want to see more. Also, join the Discord server, okay? I'll be doing live streams where I'll be talking to people one-on-one -on -one, probably sometime soon. So if you want to see that, then join the Discord server. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe and piss off.